the order of uh, this joint meeting uh, of the Library Select Board and the uh, Edward Farrar Utility District. Um, and the first order on the agenda is, uh, I guess, to have the joint meeting. <laughs> yes, Scott. Um, I wondered if we uh, might start with a moment of silence. It is with heavy hearts that the EFUD commissioners are here tonight. This is our first meeting after the passing of uh, Lawrence Lefty Saya um, and things, and uh, I put together a resolution of sympathy um, that I'd like to propose that the two boards uh, would sign and I would present to the family at the services for Lefty. So um, if that's acceptable. Could we have a sure. moment, a moment of silence in uh, memory of? Uh, Lawrence Lefty say uh, Thank you. Um, and I have uh, put together with a lot of edits um, things with people I'll pass you around and I was going to read it and um, a couple of things mm -hmm. we've done this for uh, um, different people uh, who passed away in service, a long time service. Um, resolution of sympathy. Whereas the community of Waterbury was deeply saddened by the death of Lawrence Lefty Saya on Monday, October 30th, 2023. And whereas Lefty, the honorary mayor of Randall Street has lived with his family at 18 Randall Street since 1972. Whereas Lefty has served 27 years faithfully and dutifully as an elected public official in service to his fellow Waterbury citizens for the betterment of community life. And whereas Lefty's example of public service included kindness, politeness, respect, and honesty, creating an oxymoron, exemplifying an honest <laughs> politician. Um, and whereas Lefty was presented with the 2017 Wallace Community Service Award by the citizens of Waterbury in recognition and appreciation for his service for the benefit, betterment of his community. And whereas, Lefty passed away preparing for his favorite holiday, Halloween, to show his love of community and its children. Out of love and respect, a neighbor carved a memorial Lefty pumpkin for display on Randall Street during Halloween 2023. And whereas, his passing is sorely felt leaving a big hole in the hearts of his family, his friends, his neighbors, and the entire community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Town of Waterbury Select Board and the Edward Ferrari Utility District Commissioners that we hereby express our sincere sympathy to his family, his son Jeff, daughter Julie, son-in-law Frank, grandchildren Elizabeth and Sam, son-in-law Tom, and grandson Jacob. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the permanent records of the town of Waterbury and the Edward Ferrar Utility District, and a copy of this resolution be presented to his family as a token of our sympathy on his passing 
and share our respect and appreciation for lefty's service among us. Dated the sixth day of November, 2023, at Waterbury, Vermont. And I propose it be signed by Roger Clapp, Chairman of the Select Board, and P. Howard Skip Flanders, Chairman of the Edward Ferrara Utility District. So. Beautiful. Thank you for doing this. I don't know, has everybody seen the picture of the pumpkin? I think it was Scott Mackey. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I saw it in the roundabout. Roundabout? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so. Yeah, as well as another nice memorial statement. Uh, why don't we take this as a motion? Uh, and do we have a second? To make a motion to approve the resolution, resolution of sympathy for uh, Lefty Sand. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, your motion from the. Can you hear us, Bob? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I will vote tonight by thumbs up. So good. Yeah. 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 I like it. <laughs> Would you get it? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the resolution of sympathy on behalf of Dr. Sayle for the uh, board. I'll second it. Motion been made and seconded to approve the uh, resolution of sympathy for Lawrence Lefty Say on behalf of the Edward Ferrar Utility District. All those in favor go thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes, so. Um, I will sign this. I've got official copies that uh, Karen has stamped in the center. Uh, town clerk chartered 1763 Waterbury, Vermont to make it uh, hmm. official. Well, thank you to Skip and uh, the e front board for pulling that together. Nicely done. I also wanted to recognize that uh, our Harwood Union Highlander Boys Soccer won the Division II Championship. So congratulations to them. <coughs> and so the yeah. and the girls won their championship. Yeah. Uh, Melton won. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Melton won. Melton won. I apologize. Two. But there was right. a sharf. On both winning teams. Yeah, so, that is true. Yeah, that was, <laughs> Sorry. My that was nice. Um, and then on a more somber note, um, uh, I received a num number of uh, comments about uh, the uh, extreme uh, bad luck that uh, our colleagues over in Montreal, uh, Montpelier have been having the past couple of weeks, and in fact, the past six months. Uh, MK and others uh, asked if we could do something, uh, and so uh, I did contact our uh, fire chief, and he uh, acknowledged that uh, our fire team uh, was very much involved in uh, containing the conflagration at RK Miles, uh, so that uh, we, we, Waterbury did already play a significant role here, but I also uh, offered to uh, have, get a card of sympathy, uh, which says, one foot in front of the other, that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is to encourage them, and so I can pass this around, and I'll send this to our colleagues on the uh, city council in uh, Montpelier. Okay. And uh, welcome anyone else in the audience that wants to sign it, uh, to sign it as well. All right. <coughs> On to other matters of the uh, joint meeting. We're he really here for, for two reasons. One is to um, for the first uh, annual review of uh, oh public. Yes, thank you. <laughs> How about a public portion, um, which is uh, open to anyone uh, that, from the public who would like to address something that's not on the warned agenda? Yes, 
Come on up, done. Thanks, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to hand out, here's four to pass that way. Here's a couple of you. If you can pass oh, those down. Yeah. So I'm a board member and treasurer of the Waterbury Area Makersphere. And in June, we signed a lease to rent uh, the former's raised auto body shop next to Ted's car care. And we created, um, in the last four months, we've been creating a wood shop, maker space, uh, creative studio, et cetera. So we are going to have, we are hosting the RW Mixer on November 15th, which is Wednesday. Open to the public, open to RW members. It's uh, kind of a business member networking, but it, uh, Karen says anybody can attend. And we also, by law, have to have an annual event. So we're going to do our open house annual event the next night so we can leave all the stuff set up in two <laughs> days. Uh, because the first of the RW is really their event. So uh, um, there's a personal invite for all of you, and I appreciate the support, Tom, you gave us. Uh, for Makersphere, you know, to help in the EFA district for you know, providing your support for us. It's been great. Um, doing a woodworking shop is expensive, as you can imagine, uh, but it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work. Uh, we've done a variety of classes already, stained glass for <coughs> middle schoolers and adults. Right now is a woodworking tool safety class for middle schools going on. We've done mosaic. We've done the float, the, uh, the NQID float that makes your beer was built by middle schoolers. It was so nice to back a trailer into a big space and you have to worry about how hot it was, if it was going to rain or anything. It was great. The float that's on the back, uh, the mural that's in the back of uh, Snow Street Cafe, that was uh, painted in the spray room, if you can imagine, all, the, all these lights. We built an A-frame, put four four by eight uh, panels up, and the artist stood and painted it within the shop. So it, it's it already in a four months, and what a few things we've done, it's been an amazing uh, space. So please, it's, if you can attend one night or the other, or come both nights if you choose to. I'd love to have you there. <laughs> Love to have you guys there, especially you, all of you, because you're the leaders of this community. So if somebody walks up to you and say, what is this makers for this thing? What's going on? It'd be great to have you guys have a, a working knowledge of it or somewhat. So that will be Thursday. We'll explain a lot about what makers for you know, what our mission is and what we've been doing over the last four or five years. So thank you. Great. Thanks, thank you. How, uh, do you have a long-term lease uh, on the facility? A year, please. A year, yes. Okay. Great. All right. Other comments from the public? <clears throat> All right. Well, thanks, Don. And thanks for the invitation. Thank you for being here. Um, so um, now um, um, we are to meet on the municipal manager's review uh, and the 2024 health insurance. Did we want to take up the health insurance first? It's up to you. Okay. I think it might be good. Do you want to explain? <clears throat> sure. I tried to give a, a pretty detailed memo. Um, the, the bottom line is the, the two major providers, Blue uh, Cross Blue Shield and MVP, um, their, their plan offerings increase each year at slightly different rates depending on the plan, but the average um, is about 12%. Um, we didn't see it this year reflected in the rates, but it was really noteworthy, I think, that this year, for the first time in, in the decade I've been following it, and, and I, I get the sense quite a bit longer, but the Green Mountain Care Board really flatly rejected the budget um, for, uh, for a major hospital here. Um, that's never been done. Um, in a long time, and so they, they gave them a rate increase, but it was you know something like three percent, way below the the double digit rate increase they asked for, and that was heartening to me. Um, I was glad to see that board um, took a, took a different stance than they have in recent years. So I'm hoping that in 2025 um, we're not looking at 12 percent because UVM um, UVM can't raise won't raise its rates that much or won't be allowed to, and the other hospitals won't and the insurers then should also be held to a similar standard. Um, <clears throat> that being said, this year we're in a you know we're in a pretty big bind. Um, we still remain in a really tight labor market. Um, been that way for a few years. Probably not going away anytime soon. Uh, one example I'll give is we um, this was some time ago, but it was you know 
eight or nine months ago, we, we had someone um, from a neighboring town um, come in for an interview and, and they were making um, 28, 29 bucks an hour with free health insurance where they were completely free. So we had to beat that offer and we couldn't, I couldn't modify health insurance for one person. Um, so I offered that person $32 an hour, um, which was a real hardship offer because other people in that department made less and they've been here a while, but we felt under the gun to make an offer. That employee got a counter um, at 40, at which point I said, good luck, we'll see ya. Um, but the person got themselves an $8 an hour raise by looking around the corner. Um, just exemplifies the market we're in. So despite the 12% the 12 in, the 12 rate increases by the insurers, I feel like we've got to come pretty close to matching that to, to just remain uh, competitive. It's been a hallmark of local government for years that the benefits are good. Uh, maybe there's some sacrifice in pay, but the benefits are good, and, and that's what we're competing against. So I'm proposing rate increases of about 10% to try to keep pace. Um, the odd thing, um, and sometimes it's just dependent on, on who you hire, but it looks like our 2024 budget on a net basis, we won't see much of any increase in health insurance because we're a bit under budget this year. Um, and just that the mix of people we've hired, we've gotten lucky. So from that perspective, we're okay, but of course that's just luck. That's not something I can take any credit for whatsoever. Uh, the other piece, um, <coughs> I want to talk about briefly on page three is the buyouts um, <coughs> for people not taking our plan. <coughs> In prior years, the buyouts were based on a percent. So if you if you were eligible for a family and didn't take it, you generally got about 10% of that cost. Um, I just looked around at neighboring towns and looked at all our competitors, and in general, the number for for a multi-person plan is $3,000 a year, 250 bucks a month for the buyout. And so I think rather than basing it on a percentage, just match the hatch, do what the other towns are doing, and that will keep us competitive. <coughs> the other piece, uh, two other pieces I want to talk about. Uh, so vision and dental, which we haven't had before, but we talked about as part of the employee handbook. Um, vision and dental rates, don't increase anywhere near what health insurance rates have increased. Um, they've generally been flat for a long, long time. Um, you know, so in total, those those the, adding those plans is is pretty pretty inexpensive for the town, but it's a an, an efud, but it's a piece that again I think makes us competitive. Um, you know, the benefits aren't incredible for any vision and dental, um, but I think they're still meaningful. Um, you know, it's pretty standard, a couple of checkups a year and some money towards things like contacts and glasses, but it's meaningful and I think it's a, it's a broad-based benefit that everyone's going to enroll in. And what I'm proposing is uh, the town simply pays the monthly premium for the employee, um, and if the employee wants to add spouse dependents, they would pay the difference. Um, so for vision is really cheap. Vision is about $7 a month per employee. And if you have a family plan, there's no, there's no two person, it's just family. It's about double that. So pretty cheap from the town's perspective and from the employee's perspective. Um, dental is more. Dental is about $35 a month for the employee. If you go to the family, it's about 100 a month, so the employee would pay that difference. Um, a little more coverage there. Service is used a bit more often. You get some coverage for dental, uh, for dental surgery. <coughs> um, but I think it's a meaningful gain to employees. And it's really nice when you're recruiting, when you sit down with people to talk about what the benefits are. I think people are generally surprised when vision and dental aren't part of the package. <coughs> um, and then the final piece, and this one I think could have serious legs in future years. For this year, I, I expect participation will be pretty minimal. Um, but I wrote about a new option, a new way to think about insurance. And the, and the way we do it now is generally works. Um, the town contributes a certain amount per month. And, and I'll use myself as a, rough, as a rough, rough example this year. I'm on a family plan. The town pays about $2,200 a month towards my coverage. 
my plan costs $1,600 a month, so that differential of $600 a month goes into my health savings. So I get $7,200 a year in my health savings. My deductible is about eleven five, and then of course there's the out-of-pocket maximum, which is more like fifteen. So I've got, I've got risk. Um, sometimes you you spend nothing and you just walk away with seventy two hundred dollars at the end of the year, and you keep that it rolls over each year. So you can have good experience for a number of years and and be swimming in cash in that account, and you can have bad experience and have a really high out-of-pocket cost. Um, I've talked to um, a couple of consultants in this world, and I'm probably going to um, take this idea further in, in for 2025, but the model that I think makes sense is to turn it on its head and to change the model where the employee is the first payer, but your cap is lower. So the employee, and the employee and what I propose as an option for this year to people to take, the employee is the first payer, so for a family plan, it's $3,000, so the employee pays $3,000 of their deductible, but they're the first payer. So the town in that case would pay the monthly premium, but that $600 a month wouldn't go to the employee, it would stay with the town. So on a net basis, when I look at it, talk to the consultants, there's really no added cost to the town. There could be in some years, and there could be a savings in others. Um, the employee pays first, so presumably if I'm using my money first and not the town, I'm going to be a little more frugal with it. Um, so if an employee chooses this option, they are guaranteed, 100% guaranteed if they spend a nickel on health insurance to have higher guaranteed costs than they would under the, under the past option. But they also have a higher guaranteed, sorry, they also have a lower maximum expenditure. So I think it's a good recruiting tool, because if employees ask me how much the town covers on health insurance, it's kind of a long conversation, and I've got to walk them through the memo. But if I can simply say, three grand, that's your max. It could be zero if you don't use it, but that's your max. That's an easy number for people to keep in their head. That's an easy thing to budget for. Um, you know, if you, if you, you know, you, you create a health savings account, 52 pay cycles, all right, I'm going to put 60 bucks every week into my health insurance. And I know that's all I'll ever need for the year. And that's a pretty good deal. Um, so I want to push that as an option this year. Not push. I want to propose that as an option. Employees are free to select what they want. But it may be something that we want to consider town-wide as not an option, but our planned choice for future years. And then we're, every year we're looking at the rate increases that we would pay. And from the employee's perspective, we're simply saying, how much do we think is reasonable for employees to pay? How much should that, should that cap go up? Um, there's a lot of ways to slice and dice it, but I think that way um, it's pretty easy to understand for employees, and I'm, I'm hoping people will, will see that value. Um, and it all just depends on, I think, who you are and what your station is in life and um, how, much you, how much you value the guaranteed expense versus maybe taking risk. Um, but how how would we manage the paying of deductibles beyond the the yeah. maximum for the employee? How does, who does a few, that? There's a few ways to do it, and it depends on how many people take the option, and maybe maybe no one does. Um, so the first is you can actually get a credit card uh, that that you give to the employee to they just pay it directly. There's also consultants that do this, and it's 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 a pretty cheap expense, and they charge per head. They have feeds with MVP, BCBS. So all they see because of HIPAA is your bills. But they track it, and once you've hit the amount the town has set, they pay everything beyond that and then back bill the town. So there's a few different ways to do it. Um, you can also just pay the employee directly. Um, you know, if I pay money, money that goes into my account now goes into my health savings. Um, you can also pay the bills directly, and it would show on your pay stub as a um, health reimbursement account. It's not your money. It's not taxable. Mm -hmm. But there's a few different ways to track it. It just depends on how many people want to enroll, and then we'll find the easiest choice. So a couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. The Northeast Dent 
Delta Dental Plan. That's the same plan that the state of Vermont uses, I believe. Yeah, there, there's five or six options to choose from. Okay. Um, what I what it I sounds very similar to what they're using. What I didn't propose is um, orthodontic coverage, um, because if you choose an ortho rider, it's not an option for individuals. It's for the entire the entire town is in the plan or not. And okay. Opt in or opt in. It didn't seem quite fair to, to charge people more when they're when they have no option of using the benefit per se. Right. Right. So it wasn't quite broad based enough. I didn't think. And the second question, is, or more of a comment, uh, I know you talked about the M MVP, MVP plan. I would not recommend that as nothing against them, but I know in terms of a lot of providers may not take MVP, so if you have an existing provider, you, know, you might have to move to a different provider. So if the costs are fairly similar, Blue Cross and Blue Shield is so, and I think, that's just a standard that people know, mm -hmm. and I think, I think it's all about attracting and retaining employees. I think that's a really key thing, because people, people now are buying benefits in their work life as much as they're buying what their salary is. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I, I talked to one town, uh, I forget which town, but somewhere far from here, but they. Um, they polled their employees, and a couple years ago, um, their employees decided to go forgo two years of cost of living increases in exchange for free health care. <laughs> and, and then, dollar for dollar, they were comparable. But from the employee's perspective, they just thought, "Well, we don't have to deal with the hassle, and we don't have to worry about it. it takes that stress away." I understand that part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mostly, I'm hoping the Green Mountain Care Board will control costs for all of us. Maybe a little better than they have in the past. I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you because I think making some of these changes is making Waterbury a more attractive place for future employees. Um, so for the town benefit, it's it's important, and then also just the human aspect because insurance is tough and it's expensive, and for some reason it doesn't include your teeth and your eyes, like they don't count. And so adding these in, it's just I think that it is not dramatically life-changing for some folks who might work here. So thanks for thinking of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, anyone care to make a motion? I make a motion to approve the health benefits package as presented by the town manager. Second. Who seconded? Further discussion? Just to clarify, um, the option, your new proposal is just this year, one of the menu of options included of this first and to be assessed further next year. Thank you. Any further discussion? <coughs> well, none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any new folks want to make a motion? Sure. I move that we accept the uh, health insurance proposals prepared by the manager um, and that it is that we allow them to uh, manage it going forward. Here. Is that a second, Bob? <laughs> the motion has been made and seconded to accept the uh, proposal for health insurance for 2024 as presented by the manager and to allow him to manage it. Any further question? If not, all those in favor go thumbs up again. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Motion passes. Okay. Now, in the matter of uh, the review, uh, Tom has been working with us uh, for a year now. I uh, started out as the deputy uh, municipal manager for two months and then became the manager in January. But this is. Uh, 
would be his first anniversary. Um, and then in discussions with Skip, um, uh, Skip suggested that to get him in line with the other municipal officials, we could revisit this in six months, uh, but that we should uh, go through and have a review. Um, if uh, we think it's necessary, I'm certainly open to going into executive session to have an open discussion about uh, Tom's performance. Um, and that would be a, if, if we feel it's necessary. I'm not sure it is, but uh, it could be. Question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall being a part of any reviews for Bill, and I don't know if it's because we didn't do them. Um, so I don't know if there's more background on that. Uh, and then also, <coughs> I'm curious if there is a structure that's used for other town employees and if we might want to implement the same structure or procedure for the manager as well. Um, I'll let Mike talk to your first <laughs> question. Do you recall? My first question in terms of, I think it was very informal, our discussions with, with Bill. Okay. Um, I guess after 34 years, you know, you know, I wasn't there 34 right. years ago, and may, maybe his first five or 10 years, maybe Skip might know, you know, back in that history, but, you know, Bill was always, I think we would always say if Bill was not doing a good job, and so I don't think we had very formalized reviews. I think as a result of the manager search committee, we kind of, you know, looked at, yes, we would maybe more formalized, especially because we're going to have a, a newer town, town manager. But I think yeah. Tom's done phenomenally well, you know, and I'm, I'm reluctant to have to go into executive session, you know, unless other people feel that, that that's, that's necessary, you know, maybe in another six months or something like that where we could revisit it at a, uh, you know, a select, a select board meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, to add to your thing, having been here a few years, <laughs> yeah. um, we have had some pretty formal reviews of Bill's 360 degree evaluation where we had staff that reported to him, his uh, people that supervise him and his peers, even outside of Waterbury and things with the League of Cities and Towns. So we had done some pretty um, formal reviews and things. And uh, the point Danny made about being in sync and fitting into is what I was referring to with Roger is, you know, when we pass our budgets for 224, there's an amount for pay raises and things, and it fits into how much we're going to spend. And Bill would, uh, you know, kind of portion it out who got you know, raises and who didn't and not, you know. And that my concern was that the manager gets eventually fitted into that same time frame and within the same. Um, I think, you know, we agreed, we revisited um, at the time the budget has passed and um, Tom is having to review the employees for their pay raises and things at that point we can um, revisit what raise whatever we've given Tom now versus what um, the other staff and things are getting so that then going forward we're all at the same uh, time frame and everything so and then part B of your question um, I went through employee files and they're pretty thin about employees getting reviews mm -hmm. so I wanted to get through mine and then I was going to start that I'm very much in favor of having been a past federal manager. I think it's really important for both the manager and the staff person that they get, you know, an honest review. I think it's, it's you know, just to let them know where they stand. Some people think they, they walk on water and maybe they don't walk on water. Or sometimes a manager may not really recognize what an employee is doing. So. There are the 360 reviews, and I think that happened, you know, years ago for, for Bill, but I don't think even, even for Bill for staff was doing a lot of 
comprehensive reviews, and I think in some way, shape, or form, you know, at least yearly, there should be kind of a, a look in, you know, not maybe a full 360 review, but at least the manager and staff person sit down and talk. talk over. Another just quick piece. Um, down the agenda is an event for the VLCT Welcome and Engaging Community Program. Um, that's a process. They might not accept us into the program. They're only accepting a handful of municipalities. But if we're accepted, part of that work, I believe, involves VLCT's consultant doing a survey of town employees. And it's just about, you know, are we a welcome employee? It's not just from a racial equity or gender equity perspective. It's more general also. Are we a good place to work? And they get some good feedback there. So that could be informative for all of us. Mm -hmm. What's the employee uh, personnel policy uh, say with regards to that? Annual. Annual. Yes. On their um, anniversary date or? Um, doesn't say that, so I'm just going to start them now that I've got a year. So in the interim, uh, I did uh, go and uh, talk with uh, the department heads, uh, um, and they were all very positive and complimentary. Uh, in particular, they remarked that uh, Tom's ability to listen uh, and uh, really uh, engender a, a team atmosphere among the uh, municipal employees. Uh, they feel that he's very open to taking ideas, and he's also uh, been very innovative in coming up with new ideas. Uh, so he's uh, very much appreciated as uh, a staff manager, and I would certainly second that as board chair, because uh, I meet with Tom weekly, uh, and uh, find that uh, he has generally thought about almost anything that I've thought about. Uh, in, uh, the week previous and uh, come up with uh, what I think has been some reasonable um, and innovative solutions for the town. Um, and, uh, and he, I don't know if he walks on water, but he certainly was walking in water for a number of weeks here. Um, and, uh, if it isn't in water, it's in a lot of mud. So. Yeah, correct. Muddy one. So um, the Town uh, employees received a 5% raise uh, when they were reviewed last. I was going to suggest that we go ahead and accord that 5% raise uh, for Tom in, the, uh, in this starting uh, November 1st. And also, Tom did not benefit from the uh, bonuses uh, offered to all the other town employees uh, around the uh, flood, the work, extra work they did in the flood. He was here for many days on end, uh, so I was going to suggest that we offer him a $2,500 bonus uh, on top of that raise. Okay. I'll move to uh, approve the 5% um, raise as in accordance with other town employees, effective 11-1. And in addition, the $2,500 bonus for additional work during flood recovery for Tom. Like, I second that. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Sorry, Sorry, you're in the room for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I think the big thing is just making sure that we do get to the review, and I agree with aligning it with other municipal employees, but I just think one of our really important roles as a select board and as a DFI commission is hiring a municipal manager, and um, I know for me, coming onto the board and that search process was really important, so just want to make sure we're holding up our end of the bargain as boards and making sure we're getting Tom that feedback. And um, I think Roger already spoke to it. We appreciate everything you're doing, so thank you. And um, just making sure we get that annual calendar for you and employees. So thank you for taking that on for others. Uh, moving yeah. forward. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. So the board is approved. All in the I will make a, a similar motion on behalf of the EFA. <laughs> and I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs>
Most of it's been made and seconded to um, provide the manager with a 5% pay raise effective November 1st. And in addition, a $2,500, um, I think we called it a flood relief appreciation or something, but we were doing it before for all his uh, work during the flood and things. Um, are there any further questions? Just, just as a clarifying note, um, I know it's implied, but maybe it should be something that's not 5% and 5% 5, 5 as much as we love Tom, you know, the town budget, you know, a 10% plus 2,500 and 2,500, you know, just to make, maybe make that clear, but it's within that saving code. Sure. It's essentially one, one motion that gets divided. And, uh, right. We pay out a share of the 5%. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We agree um, to share in that. As in the uh, budget that's passed, so. Um, That's really oh, clear. Story. Any further? <laughs> <laughs> any further question? If not, all those in favor, thumbs up again. Yes. All those opposed. The motion passes, and um, I think it's in keeping with uh, our employees. Our uh, biggest uh, factor in. Uh, keeping Waterbury safe and everything and how difficult it is to replace staff as we found with the water and sewer department and uh, whatnot. You. So Appreciate it. thank you, Tom. Thank you. Now, just a quick update. I'll be on WDEV tomorrow at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what's the do I put in my mouth? Uh, everything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> everything. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, just, can I see clarity? It's not 5% mm -hmm. from EFUD and 5% from the select board. It's one 5% raise, and you're both sharing in the cost. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why I said that. that in a pretty yeah, you're going to reward. All right. All right. Uh, I believe uh, we conclude the business of the joint meeting. Uh, and I have a motion to uh, adjourn the joint meeting. Um, or we can post the jury to continue yourselves and we'll continue. I <laughs> have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting of the Edward Ferrara Utility District with the select board. So moved. Second. Good. All those in favor, say let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you. We appreciate your support. See you Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm going to put it on the So our select board meeting will continue. So you are <coughs> the next agenda I would is the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Move and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. <laughs> um, that is passed. Next item is the River of Lights Parade Road Closures. M.K. Monley, will you please come forward? Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you for completing the yeah. rest. Appropriately garbed. Yes, appropriately garbed oh, in my yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, Pre approved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so MK has put together an entertainment uh, application uh, for the River of Light uh, Lantern Parade, uh, which does include road closures. Um, do you want to give us just a general orientation of uh, 
how this may be the same or different from previous uh, River of Light Parade? I, that, that was just uh, the crazy. parade route won't be different. It'll, although it has been different through the years, but um, yeah. it, it'll start at school and come up Stowe Street to Main Street to Dak Row. Um, <clears throat> I have depended on the town and the rec department crew to handle all of that. I'm at school building hundreds and hundreds of lanterns and on the weekends doing that and mm -hmm. organizing all of that. So not having that on my plate is huge. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and as I think we all know, last year's road closure was kind of a you know, we, we got there perfect. safely, but it was, we had a little snags. Um, my Norwich cadets couldn't get in. And so then I've reached out to them again and haven't heard back from them after several attempts. So I'm not sure we'll have the Norwich cadets this year. So um, I guess I'm looking, uh, what do I do? How do we do this? So we can continue this wonderful tradition that people look forward to and brings in thousands of people into town. And we get everyone safely from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I guess I'm looking for help. <laughs> yeah, um, and in the past, uh, the uh, Winterfest uh, leadership team has uh, helped with, with the, the road, road closures, closures as well. And uh, at our last meeting, we did discuss this. And I know I've got at least three individuals that can help. And uh, what we have done is identify the roads that need to be closed and station somebody there and tell them what their alternatives are. Um, so like, for example, I stood at the end of uh, Winooski Street and just told people that uh, they could either sit and watch and enjoy the parade, or they could turn around and go all the way out uh, via uh, where snow fire is. Um, and the parade itself lasts maybe 30, 20, minutes, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. 30 minutes from, you know, by the time we leave the school parking lot until the last parader gets into that row. Right. What I know that uh, Chief Dillon was particularly unhappy about was that uh, the uh, new rec director from last year, not the one sitting with us, but uh, previous, um, left a par uh, vehicle parked underneath the trestle without any keys in it, which then provided a emergency safety Right. Uh, concern. Uh, well, <laughs> and, and there was the vehicle parked on the Stowe Street Dry Bridge. Ah, okay. So people couldn't get into town. That, like my musicians couldn't get to the school. The oh, cadets okay. couldn't get oh, yeah. to the school. Okay. And, just, just to be clear, the fire chief did not express a safety concern because what he said is he's just going to pull that. <laughs> he's, he's just going to blow right through that vehicle. Whatever happens, the right. town's going to pay the bill. There's a fire. I um, expressed a financial concern, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can I add another thing that the Norwich Connect cadets have done in the past, which is a huge concern, is when as we're organizing the event, parents are coming, we try to tell them park downtown or wherever they can. It's, it's been very clear that we send about three or four of them up on, um, what's the back street? Armory Avenue. Armory Avenue, because then people park on both sides, and then you can't get a fire truck up in there because they have a road is closed, you know, from the bottom of the hill for the winter time. So Gary Doe you know, has been very adamant about making sure they park only in the parking lot or on one side. Uh -huh. So we've always sent three cadets up there to kind of manage that. So that's another area that's of a safety concern. Because otherwise yeah. you can't get a truck through that street. Mm -hmm. A fire truck. Yeah. Um, Mike? MK, a really good suggestion. I know Rotary's kind of spearheads the whole NQID. Right. Contact Dan McKibben of, of Rotary. Right, that's a great suggestion. And we had a whole safety plan and stuff like that, and you could probably 
dovetail 98% of that in, in your plan. And that will answer probably many, many, many of your questions. We try to have a good, safe, because you know, that's even a bigger event than, than, right. that, than that yeah. river of lights. So okay. Dan, Dan, if I know there was a separate kind of safety, I, I can't remember who was the chair of that, but Dan would know that. Okay. So Thank you. Dan. Good suggestion. You're going to the road <coughs> meeting on Tuesday. You can okay. find out for you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, and Scott Culver also uh, presented a uh, very uh, comprehensive, I think we probably have a copy of uh, the plan that he presented uh, for the uh, Little League parade that he staged uh, earlier this spring. So would that... It was very similar. Yeah. Would it give us strategies yep. for... Yeah. Okay. I can, I can dig through and find it or we probably have it. It's got all the nice stick figures and the hand-drawn um, barriers on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So then, who's who becomes the point person slash people to make sure that gets <coughs> carried out? Yeah. Well, you, I, you would probably have on your committee someone who's in charge of the safety plan. And that's what it sounds like is missing. Yeah, right. So I think you can use these templates either from the Little League or NQID to make a plan. But it sounds like what we're hearing is that it's bought, like humans who are missing, like a core yeah, of volunteers. Someone has to coordinate. And so for this year, I wonder if, since you're going to Rotary, they might be a good partner or help with recruitment. Because you, like you said, like you, you're full in where you're at. So it sounds to me like you need a committee, a chair, um, someone who's point person for safety and that type of thing. Okay. And I would just like to point out that prior to last year's rec director, the other rec directors were able to handle that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't on my plate to coordinate or be responsible for. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm feeling is an immense additional responsibility when what I am hoping is that the town can say, hey, MK, yep, you know, go to Rotary, go to here, but there is going to be a point person from the town who shoulders that responsibility or co-shoulders that responsibility is that something you guys have talked about this year? I just I don't know any of that background. So, um, Katarina and MK, no, we haven't talked specifically about a safety plan like that. Um, I do have all the materials that MK has given me, and I am taking care of what's happening at that road from a town perspective. Yeah, I'm surprised because it does. It shouldn't be the point person. Shouldn't be someone from the town. It should be someone okay. from your organization who maybe reports to the town. Okay. Yeah, I've just, it, this is my 14th year and I've never had to do this before. I so I'm like yeah. doing my best to make it a enjoyable place that we all Volunteer end. organizations, <laughs> you know? works in progress. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm convinced that we'll have a great parade and that uh, we'll have a safety plan in place. Uh, it's just, it, the point being that there was no clear yeah, central plan. planning. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I and completely it agree. left us in a, a bit of chaos uh, over which our uh, emergency manager, <coughs> manager was not entirely thrilled. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. How much is the school involved outside of like the making of the lanterns and the space? Is there room for additional partnership as it like? You know, it's presented right. make this um, year uh, Given the capacity of employee issues and being a substitute at the school and knowing what their capacity is for personnel, mm -hmm. not a lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they are supportive financially, they're supportive space wise, but um, to ask them to be a partner in the safety plan. I mean, I think it's a great suggestion to go to the Rotary. If someone could get me a copy of Scott Culver's plan, if Katerina and I can um, work to 
agree upon, you know, what makes sense for the safety plan. Um, you know, already in my head I'm thinking, okay, so do I need to contact the state police? Is that Katerina's job? We had town truck that followed at the end of the parade. Is that my job? Is that Katerina's job? Who's, so. I think you, you have to have a point person in some way. And in some way, if you can delegate it to some other folks, I don't think that's unreasonable. Okay. But ultimately, you should have someone in charge of safety who, you know, Gary, right. Gary Dillon and such could look at saying there, there's an issue. Alyssa? I want to be mindful of just supporting this incredible community event, as you said, and wanting to things it, and then being careful as a select board that we're not <coughs> telling town employees what to do and having that go through, Tom. I mean, are you willing to meet with MK and whoever is relevant and make a plan? I think, like, I would say as a select board member, I want to be supportive and use town resources in a way to support it and um, just personally feel a little strange about me telling you what a town staff is or isn't going to do besides saying that Tom can help coordinate that. I'm just I'm looking yeah. to help me. What, yeah. Tell me what to do and I will do it. I just need, I need help. We can do that. Yeah. We've got the other safety plans. We can work on that. Okay. Plan. Speak to Dan McKibben. He'll get you right going. Okay. And then just to clarify, for the school I meant, for just for volunteers, like if they can put out a call, if anybody's, I mean, just as another partner. So it, once you get the safety plan in place and you're like, I don't have oh, a absolutely. I need five yes. people. Absolutely. That's all I meant. It's just like helping fill the gaps of like if you're missing, I don't know how many Norwich we students used to come, but just like help, having that call I haven't out. given up on them yet. But. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll have a uh, minimum of three people from uh, Winterfest who can handle Winooski Street, uh, the corner down here, uh, and the um, where the road gets blocked off underneath the, the trestle. Okay. And then we can also uh, steward the uh, <coughs> fires. Thank you. Fires. Yeah. I'm sure you can, you'll get rotary volunteers to, to help. Katarina? I just want to say that MK and I have met, and we have done a lot of this planning already. Okay. Um, or some of it already. Um, I have shared with her what we have worked on. We have talked to the state police. We have talked about those road closures. Um, we do, all, I also have the Boy Scouts helping us down at Dock Row. So there are many things in motion that will make sure that we have a really successful community event in December. So, so we, oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just uh, found Scott's um, plans. Okay. Um, Can you email it to me? Well, I, I found them in the minutes of the meeting, so they're kind of buried with a lot of other stuff. Would you like me to separate them out tomorrow and just email them separately? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay. And uh, then I think the other point in front of us is that uh, this uh, entertainment application uh, is for an event that starts at 5 p.m. and concludes at 6.30 p.m. Uh, do we have a motion from the board? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'd like to ask the board to waive the fee for the event as well. I understand from staff, previous staff, that that was done. So if you consider that, typically there's a $25 fee, but I don't think you have a budget to spend on the fee anyway. And mm -hmm. um, All right. So may I ask that on your behalf? <laughs> and I, please, please do. I think before... Well, I, don't, I don't have a motion yet, so right. whoever is going to place the motion. Yeah, before this, I don't think we should have a motion until uh, a safety plan has come forward. Okay. Uh, but just in terms of planning, uh, we could uh, approve it pending the an acceptable, an acceptable safety plan. Well, what you could do is you could approve it pending an acceptable safety plan, but not have them have to come back if if, yeah. right. if our emergency management director is happy with the safety plan, then mm -hmm. I think we're okay. Melissa. So I'll move to approve the River of Light Lantern Parade Entertainment Permit um, as presented 
pending review of the final safety plan by the town's emergency management and staff, acknowledging that you're working behind the scenes with all the people. So approval and to waive the fee for that. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations, you're all Thank set. Thank you. Can you uh, that safety plan? Do we need an approval of road, it just, it's titled as road closure. I just wanted to make sure we didn't need a separate because it's not a. Oh, I thought uh, it was an. I just want to make sure that covers everything. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a, an application for an entertainment. Uh, There's no type. perfect application for parades, as well. Oh, we're getting very, very close. We are getting. <laughs> I, I had to give them an entertainment permit, but I think it's included. And related. It's related. Too close the streets. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, MK. Good luck. Uh, board appointments to the National Disaster Committee and the Conservation Committee. Uh, the nominee is. Sorry, is he Ryan? Yeah. Ryan, help me with your last name, please. Ryan Tyden. Ryan has applied for two different uh, available seats. Uh, one is on the National Disaster Preparedness Committee, and the second one is on the Conservation. Okay. Um, and we also have tonight Joe Wartzbacher. Am I saying your name right, Joe? Thank you. So he <laughs> is also asked to be considered for the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. I have their stuff all in your packets. Okay. The application is there and all the yep. incredibly detailed documents <laughs> that you sent me. All right. Do you need a uh, No, I've got uh, this. Um, Ryan, you were here first. Why don't you come forward? <laughs> And uh, let's first uh, talk about your interest in the uh, Natural Preparedness Committee, and then we'll talk about the Conservation Commission. Uh, well, I'll probably revoke my application to the Con Conservation Committee, because I'm pretty much just interested in the Natural Disaster Committee. Okay. Great. And could you just uh, give us a short uh, update as to why you're going forward for that? Yeah. Um, I've lived in Waterbury my whole life. I've been here for the floods. Um, I live on Randall Street now, so I've, I don't know, seen the effect that it has on our town. And I think there are some good ways to prepare for um, the inevitable future natural disasters. and. Um, I'd like to help in any way I can in uh, trying to uh, trying to mitigate the, the damage from those mm -hmm. events. Right. Questions from the board? Mike. Looking over your resume, um, good resume, but I'm not seeing any technical aspects of emergency preparedness, engineering, et cetera, et cetera. Could you, you explain that? I know you have, you have, I know your parents. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, you, you, you are actually neighbors of mine. Uh, oh, yeah. um, I would, were you born when uh, Mansion Hollow? Uh, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. so you were neighbors of mine when you were, when you were probably gay eyes. Yeah, interesting. But I would be curious to hear, you know, with all the different things, you know, education, care, and stuff like that, on the technical end of uh, natural resource preparedness. Could you explain, you know, other than, I know you sound like you have an interest, and that's great. Yeah. But do you have any technical no, I don't. I don't have any technical experience with it. Um, my main interest is in how to mitigate damage from floods, and it's just like an interest of mine. I just <coughs> did my own research, but um, I think we can utilize the cornfield in a way better way, and 
I think that that is our primary defense against flooding, and it's not being utilized in the most efficient way. And that's my primary interest. The, like, what to do in case of the flooding, like after the flooding, I probably wouldn't be that helpful for. To be yeah, honest. I'll just recognize that uh, really the, this preparedness uh, is about, mostly about the volunteer response. Uh, and I don't know if, if any of us were, had a lot of technical or I wasn't that much involved, but uh, the, it, it wasn't really so much about your technical expertise right, as you know, your voluntarily willingness to, to help out and basically do what needed to be done. Uh, I'm sure uh, both Kane and Melissa and other, Danny can address that as well. Uh, Kane, you have your hand up. I will address that, yes. Um, it is not, in my mind, technical ability or if you know how to cut culverts in a road, it's mostly post-flood, what we're doing for the community as soon as the floodwaters recede. And actually on your resume, behavior consultant and disability support sound like two things <laughs> that we're absolutely going to need um, in the event that we're needing to go home to home and check on people and make sure people are all right and have what they need. Those are two skills that I think are gonna come very much in handy and teaching other people how to do it when we inevitably have to send teams out into town to see what people need. And so that's actually super helpful. It wasn't really technical ability for me. I don't know technical ability either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see, yeah. Just the same point. I think Brian has a lot of relevant experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions? Uh, Oh, I have one. Yeah. Um, how many do we have a count on our open slots? I have that somewhere mm -hmm. for the for the terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I actually need to talk about the terms with you, but we can table that for the time being. You have um, three open spots. Okay. You have John Malter yep. and uh, Mr. McDonald. Yes. They were in the I apologize if I can't remember his name right, but and that's the only two people that have been appointed to the board. Do we remember what they I guess it doesn't really matter if they're doing things. I, I propose that everybody has a three-year term, That's just right. like all the other appointed boards, but we have to stagger them to start right, because right. we can't have all five of them renewing at the same time. Right. So for the purpose of tonight, you would have to choose a, a two or a three-year term gotcha. to, to get me where I need to be. Sure. But everyone will have a three-year term after the initial yeah. setup of mm -hmm. the board. Does that make yes. sense? Yes, yep. and that was going to be my question. Do you prefer two or three? Yes. Um, I guess three. I guess mean, three. I don't really. I don't know. Yeah, I guess three. All right. Do we have a motion? I move to appoint Ryan Ryan Gantine to a three-year spot on the disaster preparedness committee. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations. Thanks so much for stepping forward. Thank you very much. All right. All right, Joseph. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And just for you, we also have your application and uh, your uh, resume here. Uh, would you mind just giving us a short uh, synopsis of why you're interested? Sir? Sure. Um, since I was 16 years old, I've always been involved in community service and basically through emergency services, first aid squad, uh, heavy rescue and fire. Um, and through those years, I've gained a lot of experience and uh, training and I've been involved in some natural disasters and planning and uh, things like that. And I helped out a tiny, tiny bit here for both floods. Um, so I got a grasp of what I thought, you know, was great. And most of it was great and things that really need to be fine tuned in regards to emergency management and planning. So when something happens, you can almost throw a book on the table and everybody's got an assignment and it goes. 
and it avoids a lot of confusion and then you have everything just kind of pre-planned because uh, floods aren't the only disasters we're going to get we could get wind there could be a big fire downtown mm -hmm. uh, there are all sorts of things and you just plug the little parts in and if you have good people it works <laughs> right um, Pretty much summarized what we had in mind. Yeah, you said uh, everything so, I needed uh, to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what other questions do we have? In okay. regards to your resume, <laughs> I think I can be the call, but uh, this is extensive. You do a lot of work. I have. <laughs> I like love doing it. And <laughs> and it looks like it's all in the <laughs> emergency and disaster yeah. response. So. Yeah, I guess for me. How many, what sort of term are you, can you offer him? Oh, yeah. Um, so we have to yeah. offer a two or three. All so three it sounds like if we start with a two, right? Yeah. yeah I'm, only, I'm 67 years old. I don't know how long I got. <laughs> 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 hey. Start with a two. Yeah, don't get personal. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so do we have a motion? I'll yeah, move to appoint Joseph to the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee and also thank him for his many years of service already on this ballot oh, review you. board. More <laughs> night meetings, we thank you, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Second that. For, then this is for a two-year position? Yeah, for yep. two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? No. Okay, congratulations. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you very much for working with service. Very exciting. Okay. Uh, is there a good time, Mike? Roger. Roger. Thank you. Sorry. So the last time we did this exercise, we appointed John Walter to a three-year term ending in 2025, which doesn't really work. So um, that was a test. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have his term end in 2025. Okay. Um, I think it's a formality because if he wants to stay on the board, he can just ask to be reappointed anyway. If everybody assuming he does a reasonable job. Okay. Yes. Um, if anybody has any objections to that, or if you'd like me to reach out to John. I am going to compile the resumes I have with the emails, and I was going to do a blast email to everyone who we've approved okay. to start putting feelers out when we set up meetings and I can ask those type of questions. Okay. I'll put a little thing together for um, you then yeah, to I'll tell you perfect. kind of where we're at right now with it. Uh -huh. Okay. Roger. Yes. Also on formalities, I just want to say Kane is functionally serving as the select board liaison and member of this committee and I just didn't know if we should vote to formally appoint him or we were comfortable with him just serving in that capacity. Uh, no, I think we should make it official. Oh, I was just hoping to let them get their wings and then fly. And then I would Did you say you were not I, just, I, I wanted to recognize if you wanted full motion. I can do that. Yeah, I mean, we can. You, Did we I can that? be granted. No. I can't find a motion anywhere. <laughs> uh, we did all the uh, liaisons. Sure. Sure. I mean, right. I, can, I can take on. I'll, 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 take, a, I'll take a motion. That's so moved. So moved. <laughs> so we'll move them like that. I don't know what it's, we're just moving to appoint him as. The convener of uh, this uh, group as well, or am I just a liaison? Liaison, right? Liaison. He's, he's, he's convened already. Okay. Yeah. Well, delegate. there is a motion from back sometime in August that says that there will be a liaison. It just doesn't say who that. This not even a motion. It's just part of okay. a discussion. Uh, oh. But did we do so, action items sloppy, like motions sloppy, for all the sloppy. other liaisons, or we just want, we just sort of? Yeah, we volunteer. volunteer. I thought it was that you wanted to have him to have a formal. A membership. Oh. Yeah. No, because we just need a we we just need one more, and we have full membership. But I can just act as liaison. Well, we can formalize liaison. Being too formal, I love it. So, what's the motion here, Mike? Uh, make a motion to approve uh, Kane as the liaison uh, from the Natural Preparedness um, Committee to the Select Board. And I second it. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Uh, you abstain. I abstain. Okay, yeah. we have one abstention. But he's still uh, now approved <laughs> as the uh, official liaison to the Natural Preparedness Committee. 
All right, moving forward, uh, we have Amtrak Crossing discussion. Daddy. Sure. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, I met with our Northeast Regional Representative from Amtrak and Karen uh, from Vitalizing Waterbury and Roger was there as well. Um, and they just came to introduce themselves and talk about how things are going with Amtrak and the station and um, safety, et cetera. So Karen had a lot of that meeting with talking about the building. Um, they are responsible for certain parts of the building, like whatever that little building is, like electrical shed or something. I'm not sure what it is, but there's graffiti on it. And so they, you know, said within 30 days they would have someone come to clean it up. There was a light bulb out. They're responsible for that because part of it was their property. Um, and then they talked to us about a couple of initiatives that are going on that seemed relevant to the board. One is a safety initiative that they do for free in public schools to talk to students um, and then give information to the parents as well about schools that are near railroad tracks. And so, um, you know, they said if we were interested, we either we could reach out to them or we could just give their contact information to the principals. Um, and it's a free program where they come into the school and speak to the different classes. Um, and because so many of our families live here and then cross the railroad tracks to walk to school, it felt like, um, you know, worth mentioning and seeing if we wanted to connect them with that program. I believe my school had something. <laughs> I, there was a man who said, any time can be train time. Any time can be train time. No, I never I heard forgot. that. I always <laughs> across the track. Never forget. I always take the dry bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the second is that uh, Amtrak has identified a number of priorities throughout the state to make um, crossings, what do they call them, grade, cross, grade crossings, more safe. Um, and we were right at Black Caps, we showed them ours, which is not very safe when you really look at it. The crosswalk is on, the pedestrian crosswalk is on the railroad street side. Um, but folks are often crossing on the Park Row side um, or coming and going and they got to see it and actually people were walking their dogs, people were going to the grocery store, people were just like hopping off the black cap, you know, little boardwalk and going and, you know, I do too because I walk there every single day with my dog. Um, and so they felt it was a really good initiative. So what they said is that they were going to investigate a little bit with the, um, the priority projects and let us know if it is or isn't. And then if it is, great. We'll just get more information. I forget what the time span is, like the next five years or plus that they're d working on around the state. And if not, they've identified a grant program that if we wanted to take that on, there was like, I think up to $100,000. I might be really wrong on that. Um, for you know pursuing it on our own. So um, I do need to reach back out to her if we want to pursue or just get the information about the school program so I can see if she's found out any more about the, that priority program. Um, and then lastly, she did request a um, letter of support, Ooh, I'm trying to find it here, um, from the town. So RW did a letter of support. It's a pretty broad letter. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, towards, oh, to uh, Amtrak is requesting appropriations, um, 3.6 billion for fiscal year 24 uh, from the federal government. So they're looking for CDS dollars. Um, and it's a really generic letter that they gave as a template. I just, I think, distributed it to the select board literally when I got here, so probably no one has been able to look at that. Um, but it's something you can consider. And then I think the deadline is like November 17th. So if we decided we wanted to go forward with that, um, we'd have to do that virtually <laughs> over the next week or 10 days. Um, but it's really just saying that, you know, we support Amtrak in terms of jobs, train service, economy, et cetera, and their request. Yeah, I think we could uh, pass a uh, resolution to, to draft and sign such a letter tonight if we wanted to. And then Carol, Carol make a motion. Um, so what would the process be then? Um, just editing this letter and then having the select board 
sign the letter yeah. of support. Yeah, and we, we could do that. that. I think we can sign. Yeah, What's our next meeting? The twentieth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So this one. Uh, well, you could uh, have uh, three of us uh, sign it uh, and get it off by the seventeenth. Um, and then we need to do a motion for that? Yeah. Okay. So I'll move that we sign a letter of support for Amtrak in their pursuit of uh, appropriations from the federal government and send that to them by the deadline of the 17th. Hmm. And not that it would have anything to do with the other, but uh, you could also ask whether the our crossing upgrade is part Shall of the priority plan. <laughs> Um, okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. I'll follow up on that. On the letter. Just as a just as a comment, it's a missed discussion. Uh, rail service in this country is abysmal, you know, compared to most other countries, and it's it's a shame. Um, I wish Amtrak did a better, you know, I think they're a necessary cog in the thing, but we really don't have a good rail system in the United States. The Biden administration announced this morning that they are looking into upgrades for Amtrak in the Northeast Corridor. How timely. <laughs> How timely, <laughs> right? Yeah. I know part of the issue is that Amtrak doesn't actually own the tracks, and mm -hmm. so right. well, they yeah, can't right, upgrade, right. necessarily upgrade tracks that they don't own and the owner doesn't care to upgrade uh, her or himself. So that's, uh, you know, part of the issue with uh, how slow the train yeah. moves between here and uh, mm -hmm. New York City. But we'll solve what we can. Keep putting our duck feet in front of one another. Um, um, Next item is the WLCT Welcoming and Engaging Community Program. What do we know about this? We talked about this briefly at our last meeting. So this is a cohort program that the LCT is offering for the second year now. It's in partnership with Abundant Sun, who's a consultant who does um, consulting work across the state. Um, so Tom alluded to earlier, up to eight communities can be applied to this um, passed out before the meeting, just a form letter basically saying we're interested in, in applying. Um, Tom said he would is willing to participate and actually had also heard about this at a conference, so he can speak to it after. Um, and Rachel Muse, who's the library director, was also willing to participate. I said I'm willing to participate on behalf of the select board. Um, it would be a series of both virtual and in-person meetings, um, mostly virtual, kind of like two-hour workshops that move through a curriculum. Um, and as Tom talked about, there's also some data pieces around gathering data from municipal employees about if Waterbury is a welcoming place to work. Um, I thought it was great that we updated the employee handbook. You know, mm -hmm. less than a year ago, one of the application questions is, what have you been working on? So in addition to the declaration of inclusion, it's really nice to talk about some of the tangible work we've done with the employee handbook. So to me, this is just a way to continue to do that. Um, VLCT is really heavily subsidizing the cost. So again, it's $500 if, um, me, Rachel, and Tom all attend. I think that goes down to $100. Um, it's like oh. another $500. Um, so if, they take money off the more people you send. Yes, they wanted to up the attendance, and so there was a proposal oh. around uh, incentivizing that. I'd be, if, especially if it's going to lower our cost, I'd be very interested in attending these meetings. Great. Um, yeah, I'm happy to. We can see if more folks could come. That would be great. Um, so basically, the question tonight is if folks have follow-up questions yeah, or if they were comfortable. Um, I think we all got that postcard and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, moving forward with the application, it's very straightforward, um, and I'm happy to work with Tom on just making sure that gets submitted by Thursday. But again, want to defer to you as the, the manager who's also interested in this. Sure. I, um, I saw a presentation by Abundant Sun a couple of weeks ago at a manager's conference. Um, really impressed by it. The, the, the head of the company talked a lot about how this um, this industry of you know equity inclusion training has become big business, um, but they really want to start by being data driven and, and you know, that the survey data of employees is really important. 
Um, so she said part of her experience is driven by the fact that she's been doing this work for decades and decades. And you do this work and you educate the company or so you think, but then you do surveys and everyone doesn't want to come to work every day. Um, so she talked about that um, and how we've just got to be more data driven about it and be a little smarter about it. Um, sounds like it's a pretty, um, pretty substantial effort, mm -hmm. um, but that's fine. That's good. Um, something you learn from it, I think. Um, but in general, I was really impressed by it, and I talked, um, I talked over lunch with the manager for Jericho, and they went through it, and they thought it was really oh. a worthwhile experience. Yes, I got a manager from Jericho. <laughs> cool. Um, so, do we want to uh, have the um, that's it, uh, I vote to uh, join this initiative. So you would apply, Tom? Okay. Um, so I move to uh, give Tom permission to apply for the engage Welcome Engaging Community Selection, uh, nope, Communities Program um, on behalf of Waterbury and the three listed participants. Sorry, that was a little choppy. And also, probably add to that just friendly <coughs> amendment and pay the five hundred dollar fee for the program. That was going to drop to us. I don't think that's in. I don't think that's in our budget. We should probably add that. Well, I don't think you pay the fee to the end, right? Because it's based on um, attendance. It's not how many people, but how consistent you are in attendance. So the fee wouldn't be paid to the end. So with, um, you know, with uh, approval to pay up to $500 for the program. I say, and this is just the like application requirement is basically where this comes from, the form, which basically they want to know about the select board, or at least the majority of it supports it. I think hopefully all of us do. Um, Okay, uh, we have a motion. I didn't hear a second. I'll second it. Okay, motion seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we are moving forward with the. Did Karen have a color copy? Welcoming an engaging community program application. I'm going to have to pass around the. That was the goal of drafting it, is so we have a lot of Informational report. From the select board. Um, sure. So I'll take the lead on this since it was my request. I was um, musing that you know we continue to talk about or brainstorm ideas to be more engaged with the public. How can we do more outreach? Um, and then I uh, spoke the email with Tom about two ideas. One was his um, a monthly report from the town manager. He sends weekly updates to us and I find them exceptionally helpful um, and I thought a monthly update on a you know more condensed more public friendly basis would be really really helpful which he's agreed to do um, and then I think similarly select board updates um, on front porch forum that we can also copy Lisa on uh, similar to the way that Teresa and Tom do legislative updates via front porch forum I think it's really great by way of transparency, people to know what's going on. I think it's, you know, obviously they have access to the minutes, but it's condensed, it's a little more accessible and at a glance and just shows the effort. So I don't have a proposed method. I think monthly would be great because we could sum up both meetings from that month. So whether it's the last week of the month or the first week of the next month, um, just a bulleted list of what was discussed, anything else that went on, um, or things that we feel are important, or even like special thanks or shout outs, I think would be a nice addition. Um, I'm willing to kick us off and like do a draft, you know, in retrospect of October, and I can keep it up if folks are into that, but I also thought, you know, it might be nice to share it, like if we switch every month or every three months, you know, so that different voices are getting out and about, but I'd be happy to create the template and, and start us off if everyone felt comfortable with that. And um, could also, you know, send a draft for approval if someone feels something got left out or isn't appropriate to be in there, they could say, so. I'd probably just add, I know you just mentioned front foot forum and Waterbury Roundabout, which shows are both great, but I also think that the town, you know, you know website, that should all be on there. 
in the like just in the select in the select board page. Yep. Yeah. Maybe we have a select board blog. <coughs> they could be shared on the town Facebook too. Oh, Come on. We talked about that. Select board WordPress. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tumblr. Um, okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, so yeah, I just I don't know that we need action, but wanted to make sure that everyone felt comfortable with that, or if there were other ideas to I include. And I'll say I lean towards the retrospective a little, just in that I think like some of it is to like things have happened, but folks then I guess wanting to balance with like outreach, thinking about like the charter boat being a great example of something that we talked about, and now there's an action item. But um, anyway, just speaking like offhand from my memory, yeah. like I think uh, I think as you said, the bold list format or something that can just be a nice reflection of like you know someone came to the charter and you have like what does select board do like kind of you know and and just being you know. Of, mm -hmm. Um, Dana Allen approached me after the last meeting to ask me about using email addresses that are collected oh, yeah. here and there's some reluctance among both Tom and I to do that because they were given to us for a specific purpose and we're not so sure people want them used for other purposes. But I think there could be some value in asking the community if they do want to get on a general Inside email them. list opposed to select board meetings and EFUD meetings. Uh -huh. um, I also couldn't answer the question why none of the other board agendas are distributed using MailChimp, which is this list that we have, one of the lists we have. I, I can't answer that. I don't know why that's not used to distribute agendas for other meetings. I don't but know. Where does it might that be cost go. because you pay for each of Yeah, you have to pay for right. uh, over a list. thousand. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Nope. There's like a threshold. Because you know, yeah. yeah, you're below um, the threshold. Um, it's free okay. until you do over a thousand. Okay. I, what little bit of sleuthing I did, I found out that our web designer set it up. Mm -hmm. So Carla was given instructions how to do it, but I hadn't gone a step further to find out why I was limited. Mm -hmm. So okay, that answers that question. Yeah. Um, it's can't because we send emails out to people for the uh, agendas for the. Uh, Board meetings. Yeah, that's what she's speaking. Right. Just for those two meetings, so just EFUD and Select Board, we don't send them for any of right. the boards, library, conservation. So it's just a numbers thing about why we can't do other things. So I, I don't know. I'm learning this with you, Mike. I okay. don't know what this So you pay by the numbers. By the numbers so for it. Yeah, how many uh, email addresses and how many, how many times you use it? Uh, and how many lists you have. So, right. like, I have a MailChimp where I could have two lists. And if it was EFUD and select board, and then if I wanted to add a commission list, then I have to pay. So there's like a, a bunch of different ways where they change the membership so level. Fee structure. But okay, <coughs> Which so is there's fine. a fee structure. Right. Maybe we still want to talk totally. about doing it. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. making. The cost is not but if we're going to pay for enormous. it, we got to use it. Um, right. Do you know how many people are sent those agendas? 178. Okay. 178, that's all. Well, recent agendas, I've just been, like this agenda, right, I sent to both lists. Right. I mean, it was just one email, yeah. but I sent it to everybody right. on those two lists, because it gives me that option. And who? Lisa has something to add. She knows more about mail. Okay. Than I Lisa. I distribute the newsletter that I think a lot of you get from the roundabout um, on MailChimp, um, and I am sending it to just over 2,100 people at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and... I have the ability to send a lot more emails than I do. I usually send one, if at the most, maybe two. And this week I send two emails, but so mostly it's one a week. It's based on the number of contacts, as Roger said. And I'm paying thirty-nine dollars a month. Yeah. Um, I think the cutoff was somewhere around two thousand um, or fifteen hundred contacts um, that were the free version of it. So, like, until you hit fifteen hundred contacts in your thing, you don't have to pay. Okay. Um, and and there's a pretty large number of emails that you can send uh, before it kicks in. I know like Duxbury did this, and they, I'm on their email list. I don't know if any of you get the Duxbury emails, but um, they right yeah. now, about a year ago, started their municipal email list sort of thing, and they've only got about 400 people signed up. So in terms of you know they've got the people that are engaged, engaged with the people that are interested, um, but and that goes out. Um, I'm not sure if they use a Mailchimp. I have to look and see what that is. Um, but that's the, the response that they've gotten so far. So yeah, well, we're a ways away from 400. Yeah. But, um, I, like you all, I think I've heard some some uh, criticism for not doing more to be transparent. Well. Not so much to be transparent, but just 
to get the word out. Yep. So. Uh, we have, uh, it's not even a motion, but a suggestion uh, to move forward. And are you thinking maybe end of this month for your first? Uh... Um, yeah, or I could do one in the coming week, which should just be like later, you know, and for an October look back and then shout out of what's coming ahead. Okay. You know, even if it went out before the 15th still. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving welcome. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I think it warrants, you know, maybe a future conversation for over communication, see how things are going. What, what do we do that's just extra work, you know, like putting up, or what do we do that's really important? Like it sounds like getting those other committee meeting agenda is at least accessible to have alerts. Seems like a really good idea. Um, but there's more, I think there's definitely more room for conversation of like, do, if we want a town email list, like we can push that out. We can get people to opt in via front porch forum, via, via you know, the, the roundabout and stuff. So if we choose to go that way, but um, yeah, I think it takes a little bit of thought and deliberation yeah, I think to do something. Yeah, an opt-in procedure would, would be better. Mm -hmm. uh, like I get way too many uh, front porch forum things than I can possibly right. read. Right, yeah. uh, uh, right. So as a consequence, I tend not to read it at all, which is not good either. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would be helpful in disaster, but we'd also have to know that it wouldn't cover, you know, if, if 700 people opt in, that's great, but we still have so many other folks, you know, to reach, but mm -hmm. it would be an additional method of communication. Mm -hmm. but, okay. <coughs> okay. Well, this sounds like a good, good step forward. Quick question. Yes, Mike. And mine's it's directed to Lisa. Mm -hmm. Out of your 2,100 emails, how what percentage of that one of our residents? Who signed that? Who signed that? It's hard to know. I don't ask them at what where don't they ask. live. Okay. Um, but we have about a. Because I know you probably get more town and you know and stuff. A little bit. It's a predominantly Waterbury and Duxbury, I think. <clears throat> and you know, there's also a fair number of people just within like the Harwood School District because yep. you know that. A lot of people are focused on Waterbury, but we have a pretty good open rate now. Like we, about 60% of our, our our newsletters are open, and we can see like the people are using it. So and you, know. you get that analytics through the Oh yeah. yeah, I can. I'd be happy to show you that. It's you can really find out a lot. You can mm -hmm. find out a lot about what they're. You can find about um, how many people are opening it. You can find out what they're reading. Like I, could, I sent out a newsletter today. I can look and see like. How many people are reading each thing? Whether they open them. Um, I'm not signing up to do that, but yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if, if you're interested to try to get yeah. to see, like, are people paying attention? Are they using what you're you're putting yeah. out there? Yeah. Um, one other thing too, Danny, that you might want to look at. Um, are you guys all reading the recaps that the school board sends out? Because um, no. the no. school board does exactly what you're talking about, um, and they're on front porch forum after every one of their. After every one of their meetings, if you're reading from Porch Forum, they have these posts that say school board meeting recap. Um, and they have a process in their meetings where a board member volunteers to write it for the, from that meeting. Yeah. Another board member edits it. And then the person who edits it becomes the person who writes it next time. And so they've- yeah, mm -hmm. Process. So they, at the end of every one of their school board meetings on their agenda, it's who's going to volunteer to do the recap and then who's going to end it and they send those out. Um, it gets posted on their website, so it's on their homepage, just like we, you've got the homepage for the town. Mm -hmm. um, the, it's on their board homepage, and it's also in front porch form after every meeting. But Care. doesn't it seem redundant, though, if the minutes are up within, I mean, I usually have minutes up within like 48 hours, so I'm typing them now. I think it's that not everyone goes to where the minutes are posted. I mean, exactly. even the agendas, right? You're getting an email that just says the agenda is posted at this link, but that's useful for some folks. But I appreciate that, but we could put a post in front of our that says minutes Read for last night's select board meeting are available using this link. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't have to be a whole nother document hurt, 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 hurt. that's being. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. Yeah, it feels like a so, Yeah. I think we'll Ours is going to be a lot more personable. Yeah, I'm going to use great adjectives. No, no offense to the yeah, sure. But that is, I think, the idea of like distilling, you know. Yeah, you don't need a double. But you could include a final sentence that says, oh, yeah. agendas and minutes for all meetings are always 100%. Available. And I'll encourage that. people to sign up for the notifications yeah. as well. There we go. I think, I think yeah. this is an important conversation. Yeah, yeah.
that's my question. Maybe for next meeting, I was wondering about if Karen could look at like if you can do those sub lists because my to the question of like I understand not wanting to use a list for um, not what it was intended for, but if we created a new list, doing a one-time email to everyone that says like, do you hi, do you, you want to opt into all agendas or like pick one other board or committee you know that you yeah. care about and like like once we have that set up, do a one-time thing to let those folks. If they want to then get all of them or not. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll take some time. Okay. Uh, I think we are now on uh, the next meeting agenda. And Karen has put forth uh, a draft of what we've got so far. Um, which has the appointment of the library commissioner. Potentially, yeah. Well, that became known today, to be honest. Right. I've only had it. And you said also we need a tree commissioner? Yeah. And we need one more uh, flood preparedness or natural disaster preparedness? And and conservation. <laughs> hmm? I said housing and conservation, I think, have openings too. So just to say relevant oh, okay. boards and committees if there's that. I can't find my copy. That's really helpful. Um, the restorative justice, um, I, don't know, I don't know that we need to change the bullet, but we'll have, um, we should have the Lieutenant Wynn here to join us. Um, Lieutenant Wynn? So Chuck? Car Car yeah, Chuck, Chuck Wynn, Carol Plant from the Montpelier Restorative Justice Center, and potentially our nighttime trooper, too. May. Uh, May. I've been told May our, our daytime trooper uses the program pretty extensively. Yeah. So that's going to take up a big chunk of time. Yeah, and um, also um, we have Jane Willard, who's been serving on the local uh, panel of six. We have six members of the panel that serves Waterbury and <coughs> River Valley, uh, and she's been serving on it for several years now, and uh, is, uh, I think the most experienced member there, so she'll have some good insights as to how and how and why it gets used. Um, if you want, if there's time, I can add, uh, we can add a third quarter financial update. Third quarter financial <coughs> update. And then I'd like to add an agenda item. Um, doesn't need to take a lot of time, but I'll have a proposed uh, budget schedule. Mm. So should we allot more time for the RJ and Lieutenant conversation? Like, should we put 45 minutes, you think? Um, Roger and I can fare it out okay. times before yeah. we finalize the yeah, agenda. Okay. I think we need to. No, it's really on time. Um, I just like to, you know, well, that's been going very well lately. I have to give some props because the timing yeah. distribution has been going well, I feel like, the past couple of months, which is often a struggle. So. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, and then we've got uh, Brian Voigt, uh, who's with. Uh, CVRPC and Doug Greeson is going to join us as well. Is he? I put that there to remind myself. Um, oh. If you could invite him, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I, uh, I just, you know, be an opportunity because that is another uh, committee to which we assign someone and then like, I personally don't hear anything about it yet. And, um, I may be the exception to the rule. Are we mediating or mitigating the flood water? <laughs> Just is it mitigation? I don't know. Maybe we're trying to find some Ryan. Where's Ryan? Go somewhere else. All right. Mitigation. I assume it was mitigation. Mitigation. All right. Um, yeah, I think we can fine tune the things. Uh, we've got, uh, in addition to what we see in front of us, we've got the third quarter financials. Uh, Tom, you can, we can figure out on Friday how much time you're going to need for that, yep. as well as the uh, budget planning, uh, the budget uh, cycle. So I'm not sure it's basically saying is like how we're going to, what the process is going to be to review the budget. Okay, yeah, well, that sounds like fun. Um, and uh, how about the committees? Do any other committees want to come back and report out? You mentioned that uh, last meeting. Uh, Skip 
was thrilled about the invitation. He said, outside of actual business in his entire span of serving, he's never been invited to a Slack board meeting just because and was so grateful and, and enthusiastic and yes, wants to come and doesn't know a date yet. So I just want to report that even the gesture that we've okay. just embarked on has made you know, Any other positive impact. We heard much from the tree committee recently. Should we ask them in? Or? <coughs> Yeah, there? let's talk to the tree folks. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, Christmas is coming. Gonna... I was at the DRB, which was kind of an interesting meeting. It was kind of all deliberative, so I can't. That would be one that I would love to hear, actually. Well, yeah. Would you uh, bring we, them in? Yeah, let's bring them in. We could. I think a lot of it, the <coughs> issues were resolved post that meeting. Oh, good. Then they don't want to have any cleanse there. Any laundry that they might have had? Yes. I'd love to hear about their conflict res resolution. Uh huh. I would. I think the DRB would be great like, <coughs> to hear. We can invite them in. Just what are they thinking? Yeah, I'd be a, a little careful about that. Yes. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's still a little explosive. <laughs> you know, they're they're not um, they're not required to reveal their reasonings for their decisions. Um, mm -hmm. I went. I went fairly deep in the weeds on my own and with staff to try to try to look at the last application and, and understand the nuance a little better. And there was a lot of nuance in that application, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so it's it's just a hard thing. I mean, when I when I first heard about the vote, I think like a lot of other people, I was not happy. Mm -hmm. But I think you just got to be pretty careful. There's some some you know. Strong personalities in that committee, all our committees, I think. So you might want to just. And they're a different, because they're a deliberative board. I said they're quasi judicial. And yeah, they're quasi judicial. They have a different charge than. It's a, it's a like different, the even than the select, even than the planning commission. They're just kind of to me, to did me, the, their own thing. The takeaway from the 51 South Main vote is the design review criteria for gray. Yeah. And, and now that the, the planning commission has. I think is ahead of the, the schedule the consultant laid out for them mm -hmm. in terms of the bylaws. Maybe the PC can be encouraged to look at the, the design review district and criteria overall and make that part of their mission going forward. Okay. I think they want to do that on their own anyway now. Uh -huh. But a little encouragement might help. Well, and I would say Katie Gallagher, who's vice chair of the planning commission, had like a five page drafted letter to that effect. So I, I think. Um, making improvements to the regulations, which is their purview, is on their mind. So if we were advocating, I mean, I'm biased, I'm always the planning person, but we can ask them also in like that maybe they care about flood water mitigation um, or just general updates they've been on the list for a while. Hmm. They also were having a joint meeting with the development review where I just wanted to say in general, I don't know if that has already planning happened. Planning is? Yeah, uh, that's already okay. happened or was upcoming, but it, um, in service to the rewrite. Hey, and, and then um, one one other just agenda item. Yep. Um, the skate park would like to come mm, to the meeting mm -hmm. on the 20th. Mm. Okay. Ah, ooh, that'll that's, take some time. That's a lot in one meeting, I think. Yeah, maybe. But, yeah, do they need to come on the 20th? Yeah. Um, not necessarily. They want to be in front of you pretty soon. They've got a proposal for rebuilding and some changes at Hope Davy. Yeah, it's not insignificant. Yeah, it's uh, Yeah, I think we should have them. Um, it all will take an enormous amount of time. Yeah. And I know this is nothing for next meeting, but I know it's in the parking lot about the reappraisal. At some point, you know, that's probably going to come up sooner than later. Yeah, we're probably going to have to hire a consultant, you know, nine, 12 months from now and, and start there. And I think we've got. Are we going to use like Nemrick? <coughs> I think we've got a local team in place that local can do team. it. Because I know I work with on my camp, Nemrick was doing our town, our that my the town where I have a camp in their reappraisal. They asked me all kinds of interesting questions because they couldn't get into camp. Yeah. And uh, by having this uh, meeting with the state police and the restorative justice people, we will be 
sort of indirectly addressing the uh, loitering ordinance and uh, cameras, <coughs> which were brought up by uh, yep. Lieutenant Wynn uh, last time he was here to talk to us. All right, so that may fill the uh, thing, but I, I do think, you know, if we, could, if we could have some more sort of thinking about what committees we work with. Um, I think the uh, rec committee that, that I'm liaising with uh, would be, would have some recommendations for us um, by the beginning of November, or at least by mid-November. Did someone reach out to the Conservation Commission as well? <coughs> Because that was sort of how this Both started, right? Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to go to their meeting next week. You'll invite them? I can invite them. Yeah, I think that was the goal, is to invite them either, you know, between now and, yeah. I don't know, February, January. I want to find out, you know, kind of where they are. I've, I know me and Billy Victor have had a lot of discussions. Start thinking about doing, like, check-ins with these committees, like, mm -hmm. quarterly or something, so we can figure out where they're all at as the year progresses and see what progress they've made uh -huh. and whatever their mission is. Maybe just every six months. doesn't matter. Just Do you think six months is the, I, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Anything more than that, would, like quarterly, would be yeah. a little onerous. Either. What if we, I mean, I think that was kind of the idea, right? We yeah, talked that was about the idea with, the, with having a liaison so that you know, they wouldn't have to all come oh, here and address the board. Gotcha. But yes. we, uh, as our liaison, could have this discussion and say, like, I know, for example, that the uh, rec committee is looking at a bunch of potential projects and they're prioritizing those uh, at the next meeting. And so uh, I would think either at the end of this meeting or uh, easily by the uh, December meeting, they'll have some clear recommendations uh, for us for budget inclusions for 2024. Right, but we also, and we talked about like maybe annually, but at least kicking off with inviting the committees that we liaise with to come yeah. to a select board meeting. Right. Um, knowing Planning Commission has been here quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I think conservation was how the conversation started, was like they're needing some direction. So, um, and then EFUD as well, which again, they've never been just invited, so they're really happy to. But yeah, if you could extend that invitation and then, you know, you'll work with the rec committee as well. Yeah. So do you want to see if uh, oh, conservation can come? Uh, I guess 20th is looking pretty busy, so uh, <laughs> probably the 5th of uh, December. The fifth. Is it the 4th? Yeah. The fifth is Tuesday. Oh, the fifth is, is the voting, voting day yeah. on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's the fourth. Right. Social Life Republic Independence Day. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was a Peace Corps volunteer in the Central African Republic, and um, the fourth of December was always a big day of celebration. Great, let's That's celebrate. Nice. What are traditional treats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Okay. All right. Yeah. Shall we adjourn? Motion yeah. to adjourn. Second. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.